Divine vengeance is liberally sprinkled throughout ancient Greek mythology, the Greek gods often come across as a vindictive lot, who do horrible things to mortals and to each other, with little sense of proportionality between a trespass and its horrific punishment, they might torment a pregnant woman out of jealousy, or condemn somebody who accidentally saw them naked to get eaten by dogs, below are 20 things about those, and other divine vengeance stories from ancient Greek lore. Number 20. Hera's vengeance upon her husband's former lover was epic. Greek mythology depicts Leto as a titan goddess whose beauty captivated Zeus, and who became his first and favorite lover, however, after Zeus impregnated Leto with twins, he abandoned her in order to marry his sister Hera, although the affair and pregnancy had occurred before Hera's marriage to Zeus, the queen of heaven was still jealous of Leto, so she set out to turn her life into a living hell, first, Hera kicked the pregnant Leto out of Mount Olympus, and forced her to wander the world amongst mortals. Then, when it was time to give birth, Hera prolonged Leto's labor in order to make her as miserable as possible. Hera decreed that her husband's former lover would not be allowed to give birth on terra firma, the mainland or any island under the sun, she then sent emissaries to all cities and settlements, to warn them that if they offered Leto shelter, food or water, Hera would visit her vengeance upon them, as a result, Leto was forced to wander the world non-stop, without a chance to settle down anywhere to give birth. Number 19. The Queen of Heaven also tried to slay her husband's children with a mistress. The heavily pregnant Leto was forced roam for years while in labor, unable to find a place to rest and give birth, she finally came across a barren island that was not connected to the ocean floor, so it did not count as a real island by Hera's definition, the island's barrenness also meant it had nothing to lose, and thus nothing to fear from Hera's vengeance if it defied the Queen of Heaven's will, there Leto finally gave birth to Zeus' children, the gods Artemis and Apollo, that just made Hera even more jealous of Leto, so she sent a dragon to chase her and her newborns around. In their flight they sought refuge in Lycia, whose peasants on Hera's instructions, sought to prevent Leto and her infants from drinking water, so Leto turned them into frogs, before the infant Apollo eventually slew Hera's dragon. Hera also sent the gigantic titan Tityus to assault Leto, but she was once again saved by her children, Apollo and Artemis who killed their mother's would-be attacker, Hera eventually came to terms with the situation, accepted things as they were, and let Leto and her children be, Leto then went on to become a goddess of motherhood, whose portfolio included protection of the young. Number 18. Hera's jealous vengeance also fell upon Zeus' other mistress, Io. As seen above, Hera's husband and sibling Zeus was an insatiable and predatory nymphomaniac, whose eye roved non-stop, he constantly cheated on the Queen of Heaven, and not just with goddesses and supernatural females, but with mortal women as well, understandably, Hera was none too happy about her husband's serial infidelities, which left her feeling slighted, she did not take that up directly with Zeus, however and direct her wrath at him for his serial violation of whatever passed for marital vows, and obligations of monogamy atop Mount Olympus. Instead, Hera flew into jealous rages, and took it out on the unfortunate seduced, tricked or sometimes flat out assaulted by Zeus in order to satisfy his lusts, Io was one of those unfortunate victims of Hera's jealous vengeance, according to Greek mythology, Io was a priestess whose beauty caught Zeus' eye, and caused him to fall head over heels in love with her. The chief god lusted after and pursued Io, but she resisted his advances at first, until her father kicked her out on the advice of some oracles. Number 17. Zeus turned his mistress into a cow to hide her from his wife. A homeless Io finally gave in to Zeus, to conceal her from his jealous wife and shield her from Hera's vengeance. The chief god turned Io into a white heifer, it did not work, Hera, knew her husband and her brother all too well, she began to get suspicious when she noticed just how much time he was spending at a pasture, in which a magnificent white cow grazed, so she asked Zeus to give her the heifer as a present. Zeus could not think up a good excuse to refuse Hera's request, so he grudgingly gave his lover to his wife as a gift, Hera then assigned Argus Penoptes, a giant with a hundred eyes, to tether the white cow to an olive tree, and keep a constant watch on her, Zeus driven to distraction by his lust for Io, was unable to bear the separation, so he sent the messenger god Hermes, disguised as a shepherd to lull Argus to sleep. Number 16. Zeus's wife visited her vengeance upon his mistress with a gadfly. To lull Argus Panoptes to sleep, Hermes set out to shoot the breeze with the many-eyed giant, he played the flute and told stories to get him to relax, and Argus began to shut his hundred eyes, one by one, when the giant was finally zonked out, Hermes grabbed a stone and smashed his head in, he then freed Io from her tether so Zeus could get some loving time with his cow mistress, a lived Hera found out what had happened, 
and sent a gadfly to torment the heifer and sting her non-stop. A gadfly might not seem like much vengeance, but Zeus' wife knew what she was doing, the constant buzzing and biting drove the bovine Io mad with pain, and forced her to wander the earth in an attempt to escape the irritant. She swam the straits between Europe and Asia, which became known as the Bosporus, Greek for Fort of the Cow, and the sea southwest of Greece, which became known as the Ionian Sea, she eventually swam to Egypt, where Zeus finally restored her to human form, there, Io bore Zeus a son and daughter, who gave rise to a line of legendary descendants whose numbers include Hercules. Number 15. The ancient Greek gods could be arbitrary and capricious. Of all the victims of divine vengeance, few were more innocent and undeserving of such a fate than Actaeon, the ancient Greeks' worldview differed greatly from the orderly worldview of the major monotheistic religions, in which the universe is ruled by an omniscient, omnipotent and infallible God, such a God is always just, even if mortals are sometimes incapable of grasping the justice behind some of his actions, by contrast, the gods of ancient Greece were often seen as arbitrary and capricious. Few myths depict that conception of the Olympians' arbitrariness, and capriciousness as does that of Actaeon, most entries in this article are about mortal or immortal beings, who did something to invite the vengeance of the gods, or at least found themselves in a situation in which the wrath of a good was understandable, even if unjustified, the unfortunate Actaeon on the other hand, endured a divine punishment despite not having done anything of his own volition that could have justified his fate. Number 14. Divine vengeance visited upon an innocent who had done nothing to deserve it. Actaeon was a Theban hero who loved to hunt in the outback of his native region of Boeotia, like the hero Achilles, of Iliad fame, Actaeon was taught how to hunt by the centaur Chiron, Chiron a mythical creature with the lower body of a horse, and the torso and upper body of a human, was notable in Greek legends because he liked to nurture the young, he instilled in Actaeon a passion for the hunt that proved the Thebans undoing, it happened when Actaeon was on a hunt with his dogs in Boeotia, and accidentally stumbled upon the chaste goddess Artemis. Artemis or Diana to the Romans, was naked and bathing in a spring with some wood nymphs, although the extent of Actaeon's sin, if it could even be called that, was that he had simply bumped into a naked goddess, Artemis was livid that a mortal saw her in the nude, so she turned him into a stag, the terrified Actaeon bounded into the woods, but his own dogs detected the scent of a stag, failed to recognize their master in his new body, chased him down and tore him to pieces. Number 13. A mortal too clever for his own good. Sisyphus in Greek mythology was a king of Corinth, and the founder of the Isthmian Games, one of the ancient Greeks' four major games, which included the Olympics, Sisyphus was the wisest of all men, and a cunning trickster who fathered the hero Odysseus, of Homer's Iliad and in the Odyssey, unfortunately, Sisyphus' cunning was combined with questionable ethics, among other things, he was greedy deceitful and liked to rob people, that got him in trouble with the gods especially Zeus. The greatest of Sisyphus' sins was his violation of Xenia, the sacred laws of hospitality that protected travelers and guests, when he murdered some of his guests to demonstrate his ruthlessness, that angered Zeus, whose portfolio included the promotion of Xenia, on another occasion, Zeus kidnapped Egina daughter of the river goddess Opus, when her distraught father tried to find her, Sisyphus told him where she was, and in exchange got a Sopus to create a spring, and send it to flow into the city of Corinth. Number 12. The Mortal Who Cheated and Defeated Death Zeus was already upset with Sisyphus for his violation of the sacred laws of hospitality, he grew livid when Corinthian king snitched to Asopus about where the chief Olympian god had hid the river god's kidnapped daughter, so he sent Thanatos, the god of death, to see Sisyphus and chain him in the underworld, Sisyphus however tricked Thanatos and got him to explain how the chains worked, he then used that knowledge to chain the death god, with Thanatos chained, the mortally ill could no longer find release from earthly suffering, and no sacrifices could be made. The gods threatened Sisyphus with dire vengeance if he did not free the god of death, so he reluctantly did, however, Sisyphus had one more trick up his sleeve to cheat Thanatos, he instructed his wife not to bury him or perform any of the sacred death rituals when he passed away, and to just throw his corpse out, she obeyed, and when Sisyphus arrived at the underworld, he begged Thanatos to allow him to return to earth to punish his wife for her impiety, death agreed, but once Sisyphus was back on earth, he jumped bail and went on the lamb. Number 11. The Divine Vengeance Visited Upon Sisyphus After he tricked death to let him return to the world of the living, King Sisyphus went on to live to a ripe old age, before he died for a second time, that was when Sisyphus discovered he had been too clever by half, and too smart for his own good, the gods were ticked off at him because he had showed them up, and made them look like fools, 
they also took offense at his self-aggrandizement, deceitfulness and the hubris that led him to believe that he was smarter than Zeus. So the Olympians visited terrible vengeance upon Sisyphus so as to make an example of him, the gods thought, with some reason, that few punishments are more terrible than an eternity of futile and hopeless labor so they condemned Sisyphus to an eternity of pushing a huge boulder up a steep hill, soon as Sisyphus got his boulder to the top of the hill, it would roll down the other side, and he would have to go back down, and collect his boulder to push it up the hill again. Number 10. Kings Danaeus and Aegyptus took sibling rivalry to extremes. The Danaides were the fifty daughters of King Danaeus of Libya, a key figure in the founding myth of Argos, a city-state in the Peloponnesus, Danaeus was the twin brother of the mythical king Aegyptus of Egypt, and there was some serious sibling rivalry between the two, Aegyptus had fifty sons, and when he commanded that his twins fifty daughters marry his sons, Danaeus declined, instead, he loaded them in a boat and oared by his daughters, fled across the sea to Argos, the Argives were impressed by the arrival of fifty beauties rowing a boat, and even more so by their father, whom they made their king. However, Aegyptus did not give up, and sent his fifty sons to Argos to claim their brides, to spare the local Argives from the ravages of war. Danaeus reluctantly gave his consent for his daughters to wed his twin sons, wedding plans were made, and Danaeus arranged a feast for the event. Just before the wedding, Danaeus gathered his daughters around him, and passed a dagger to each, with instructions to murder their husbands as soon as they were alone with them. Number 9. Divine Vengeance Visited Upon Homicidal Brides to the ancient Greeks, to disobey one's parents was to commit a great sin, so all of King Danaeus' daughters, except one who took pity on her new husband after he respected her desire to remain a virgin, obeyed their father's orders and murdered their spouses on the wedding night, they then cut off their heads and buried them near a lake south of Argos, Danaeus hauled the daughter who had disobeyed him before a court, but her husband intervened and murdered Danaeus to avenge his forty-nine brothers, he and his wife then ruled Argos, and began a dynasty that ran that city for centuries. As to the forty-nine daughters who had murdered their husbands, they remarried and chose their new mates from the winners of a foot race. The gods however were peeved at what they had done to their first husbands, by way of divine vengeance, they sent them to Tartarus, the ancient Greek hell, there, the deadly Danaides were condemned to spend an eternity of ceaseless and hopeless labor, reminiscent of Sisyphus, they had to carry jugs of water to fill a bathtub to wash away their sins, but the bathtub could never be filled because it had a hole in the bottom. Number 8 don't tick off the Greek god of booze. King Lycurgus was a mythical monarch who ruled over the Edni people in southern Thrace. In ancient Greek mythology, he had a beef with the god Dionysus, the deity in charge of grapes and wine. According to legend Lycurgus got drunk on wine one time, and tried to rape his own mother. When he sobered up and realized what he had almost done, he swore off the drink became a teetotaler, and enacted a Bronze Age version of prohibition in his kingdom. Lycurgus banned wine and, and ordered the destruction of all grape vines throughout the realm, he also banned the religious cult of Dionysus, whom he refused to acknowledge as divine, and prohibited the worship of the great god in his kingdom, Dionysus, being a god was not about to heed the dictates of a mortal, not even a mortal king, in hindsight, considering what happened to him and the kind of vengeance that fell upon his head, Lycurgus might have regretted his decision to take on a god. Number 7. A king who forced a god to flee for his life. When the Maenads the wine god's disciples, threw a festival in his honor atop the sacred mountain of Nysaean in Lycurgus' kingdom, Dionysus took on human form and attended as the guest of honor, when Lycurgus heard that his command had been defied and that Dionysus was in his kingdom, he flew into a rage, he rushed to Mount Nysaean to break up the festival, Lycurgus used an axe to slay a Maenad who had nursed Dionysus as a child, and chased everybody out with an ox goad. Dionysus was forced to flee to save himself from the livid Lycurgus, and had to leap into the sea to escape the wrath of the angry king. There, Dionysus was rescued by the sea nymph Thetis, who kindly received the wine god and sheltered him in an undersea cave. In the meantime, Lycurgus set out to purge his realm of Dionysus' followers, and Dionysian writes, he carried out a persecution in which the Maenads and others, who worshipped the god of wine were arrested and imprisoned. Number 6. Dionysus made Lycurgus slay his own family, then got his subjects to slay him. Unsurprisingly, Dionysus was not too happy with Lycurgus, and his disrespectful and impious attitude, so he set out to visit divine vengeance upon the Thracian king, took away his sanity, and reduced him to a raving nut, in his madness Lycurgus slew his wife and family, in a tragic divinely ordained twist, Dionysus made the king who ordered all grapevines cut down imagine that his own son was a vine, so the crazy king chopped him to death with a sword, 
and pruned away his ears, nose, fingers and toes. That was not enough vengeance for Dionysus, however who was not done yet with the Thracian ruler, the wine god laid a curse upon Lycurgus kingdom and rendered its soil barren, and incapable of producing fruit, the desperate Adonian sought advice from an oracle, who told them that fertility would not return to their land until Lycurgus was killed, so the Adonian seized their ruler tied him up, and flung him to a man-eating horse that tore Lycurgus to pieces. Number 5. Exion was mad, bad, and dangerous to know. In ancient Greek mythology, Exion was a son of the war god Ares and a mortal woman, he became king of the Lapiths tribe in Thessaly in northern Greece, and from early on he built up an infamous reputation as somebody who was mad, bad, and dangerous to know, his misdeeds on earth and up in the heavens as well, led the gods to visit a terrible vengeance upon him he first offended the Olympians when he promised his father-in-law a valuable present as a bride price, wealth paid by a groom to the bride's parents, he reneged, however and did not pay up after the marriage. The father-in-law seized some of Exion's valuable horses as security for the promised bride price, Exion pretended to shrug it off, invited his father-in-law to a feast, and there shoved him into a bed of burning coals, that murder was particularly odious in Greek eyes because it violated Xenia, the laws of hospitality governing the relationship between guests and hosts, the breach of Xenia left Exion defiled, shunned by fellow Greeks and unfit to live amidst men, nobody was willing to perform the necessary religious rituals that would cleanse him of his guilt, and restore him to good standing, so Exion was forced to live in the wilderness as an outlaw, that was bad but as seen below, it got way worse for him soon thereafter. Number 4. Exion discovered that it was unwise to hit on the chief god's wife. Although promotion of Xenia was part of the chief Olympian god's portfolio, Zeus took pity on Exion, he cleansed him of the defilement, and invited him to Mount Olympus to dine at the table of the gods, however, when Exion was introduced to Zeus' wife, Hera, he fell passionately in love and lusted after her, behind Zeus' back, he hit on and pursued her, that was another big breach of Xenia, to lust after and pursue your host's wife was a major violation of a guest's obligations to his host, the Trojan War started when Paris seduced Helen while he was a guest of her husband. When Zeus heard, he could not believe that Exion, whom he had rescued and cleansed of his guilt, then honored by hosting him in heaven, could be so ungrateful and brazen, so he made a cloud in the shape of Hera, and sent her Exion's way to see what his guest would do, sure enough, Exion ravished the fake Hera, a union that ultimately produced the centaurs, the astonished and livid Zeus expelled the ingrate from Olympus, and blasted his former guest with a thunderbolt, he then ordered the messenger god, Hermes to seize Exion and bind him to a wheel of fire, and by way of eternal vengeance, condemned him to spin forever across the heavens. Number 3. Prometheus created mankind, and angered the gods by his staunch support of humans. Prometheus was a titan the race of divine beings, who had dominated the world before the arrival of the Olympian gods, Prometheus' name which means foresight, emphasizes his intellect for he was known as a clever trickster, ancient Greek mythology credited him with having created humans from clay, and then advocated for and championed mankind in the halls of heavens, that fondness for humans got the titan in serious trouble with the gods, who visited horrific vengeance upon him as a result. The Titans, twelve children of the primordial parents Uranus, Sky, and his mother Gaia, Earth, had preceded the Olympians as gods, when the Olympians led by Zeus rose up to challenge for mastery of the world, Prometheus was one of the Titans' leaders, however when his fellow Titans refused to heed his advice and resort to trickery, Prometheus switched sides and joined the Olympians, that ensured the gods' victory, and doomed the Titans to defeat, that did not stop the Olympians from turning on Prometheus when he got on their wrong side. Number 2. Helping humanity got Prometheus in hot water with Zeus. Although he had helped the Olympian gods secure victory against the Titans, Prometheus eroded his store of goodwill with them when he took the side of humanity against that of the new deities. He ticked off Zeus and got on his wrong side when he tricked him to accept the bones, and fat of sacrificial animals instead of their meat, that set a precedent that allowed humans to sacrifice animals to the gods by burning their bones and fat, but got to keep the meat for themselves. In response a peeve Zeus took fire away from mankind, and wiped its secret from human minds, so they would have to eat meat raw and shiver from the cold in the dark of night, to make his pettiness stick, the chief god prohibited anybody from letting humanity in on the secret of fire, Prometheus however defied Zeus and stole fire from Mount Olympus, then smuggled it down to earth to share with mankind and help them survive life struggles, that was the final straw for the chief Olympian. Number 1. Zeus sentenced Prometheus to an eternity of dreadful torment. 
Zeus was livid when he looked down from the heavens and saw the dark of night dispelled by the flicker of fires, to vent his anger at mankind, the chief god sent Pandora down to earth with a box full of calamities, when the lid of Pandora's box was eventually removed, all the evils that plague humanity were unleashed upon the world, from then on, mankind was afflicted with diseases, plagues, war, death, and the constant need for backbreaking labor to eke sustenance out of the earth, only hope was left inside the box, to keep life bearable despite all its miseries. As to Prometheus, Zeus devised a horrific punishment for him, he had the titan taken to the Caucasus mountains, where he was chained to a rock, there, Zeus' vengeance took the form of a giant eagle that flew in every day to rip open Prometheus' guts and feast upon his liver, the liver regrew each night, and the eagle returned each day to repeat the process, that way, Prometheus was subjected to an eternity of torment by day, and nights full of dread of what the morrow would bring.